Once again, we're looking back at the Bush-Gore election fiasco of 2000 in the CBS 12 News I Team feature series, Recount County. Yeah, it was 24 years ago when Governor jo uh, Jeb Bush was uh, leading our state. His brother, George Bush, was very close to winning his first presidency. Many of the key players from that saga are still in our area. So how do they feel about how everything unfolded? Here's I Team Chief Investigator Mike Magnoli. It threw the whole country into disarray. In 2000, Mary McCarty was a Palm Beach County commissioner and widely regarded as a political influencer. Her husband was a Republican state committee man, and Mary was running to be party chair for the county. The day after the election, her phone rang. Five o'clock in the morning, we, were, we got the call that there was going to be probably a recount. Everything was too close to call and to please get down to government center and guard the ballots, guard the process. And uh, so we, we took off for, for Government Center and we were sort of uh, behind the scenes trying to accommodate everybody that was coming to town and all of the issues that were going on. Bleary-eyed workers began inspecting the ballots with magnifying glasses. The international media and some of the best legal minds of the time were booking flights to West Palm Beach. On the Republican side, um, everybody needed a place to throw their suitcases and their briefcases and a, and a place to, um, to kind of congregate. And it ended up being my office in Government Center. Mary says the Democrats set up shop in the office next to hers, Commissioner Bert Aronson's office. Gore was all for the recounts. He wanted them in four counties, including Palm Beach. Bush, who seemed to have the lead, wanted the election certified statewide. It's day three of the manual recounting and frustration is starting to set in. If it's clearly a vote, it's clearly a vote. We ought not to be playing games by either party. We will all be here till Christmas if this continues. Meanwhile, there are allegations of ballot mixing. The Bush campaign claims several of their ballots were put into the Gore stack. There are numerous examples of ballots being mishandled, bit, and even stacked and, and rifled through like a deck of cards. Oh my God, um, we were part of, that was part of ground zero. The Bush legal strategy was to argue that recounting votes in just four counties violated the 14th Amendment. And beyond the constitutional implications, the Bush team was objecting because Florida had no detailed statutory standards for counting votes by hand. You know, they didn't really include me in all their strategy. Or I was just sort of the hostess. I, I ordered the pizzas. <laughs> I answered the phone. <laughs> Meanwhile, downtown, massive crowds were gathering. Some were even calling for all of the election results to be discarded do an all-new election, they said. Lots of people calling for it, but I just didn't see how that could possibly happen. Knowing, what, are you gonna have the whole country do it again? Or just, you know, and, and knowing how close it was, now new people would come to, I mean, it just, no. A month later, December of 2000, when Bush won, Mary McCarty says she was already getting ready for the next fight. And I was on a mission to make sure, uh, Jeb Bush was the governor at the time. He was up for reelection in two years. The Democrats in the state were determined that he would get taken down. If they couldn't take down his brother, they were going to take him down. Um, so I became chairman of the Republican Party of the county and um, was determined to, to help Jeb get reelected. Now, Palm Beach County's never going to be all, be all red for a, for a governor, but the more votes you can get, um, the more it helps the statewide tally. So we had a goal and we succeeded in that goal. Of, and basically it was just getting Republicans to the polls. In 2002, Mary made the list of the 100 most powerful people in South Florida. In 2009, she resigned from the County Board of Commissioners as she was facing federal charges for fraud. She took responsibility, then she did her time, and she was later granted a full pardon by President Trump in 2020. Now, as a private citizen, she's a consultant and a life coach. She told me she doesn't do interviews. But when I said I wanted to pick her brain about the Bush-Gore recount, perhaps it appealed to a sense of political nostalgia. That moment, Mary says, was the line in the sand. Bush won! Bush won! And she wishes we could all go back across it. Oh, I mean, those were almost the good old days. <laughs> I think that this, uh, um, the country has gotten uh, even more divided. It's gotten... Um, meaner. 
It's gotten more personal. Uh, it's gotten where uh, the rules of civility don't apply anymore. Um, I, I think it's it's just gone gone way too far, and I think uh, our country is is not in a good place. She says maybe it will get better when there are some fresh faces in Washington, D.C. But I'm not ready to leave the past behind just yet, Mary, because I've got Chapter 4 of Recount County next week. Now, how do you feel about a guy in a bow tie? This is who I'll be interviewing, but we're not going to talk about his fashion choices. Instead, the discussion will be about delay tactics. For now, I'm Mike Magnoli. CBS 12 News. I'm Jim Grimes. Click like and subscribe buttons if you want to see more stories like this that impact you.